This is the new drill, the new seed hawk. The boar go is gone. Well, actually it's still here, it's parked outside. But we got the seed hawk inside. 70 feet, 1,000 bushel tank, 12 inch spacing. We got the dual knife. This is gonna be an exciting spring. Pretty excited for this, to try out this seed hawk. We've never ran a seed hawk before. We've had boar go forever. For as long as I've been here, I've had Borgo everything, so a little change of pace, but it should be good. I'm not a seed hawk expert yet, but I soon will be, but I can do a quick over, overview of the toolbar and tank. So with the Borgo, we had the front mineral banders here with a single shoot uh, system. So the seed hawk is a dual knife. So we got two knives. The front knife is fertilizer, and then the uh, back knife is a seed. So the fertilizer knife runs a little bit deeper than the seed, and it can actually pull up moisture and kind of prep the seed bed for when the seed knife drops the seed into. And then there's also, um, they're also offset from each other. So there's a little bit of diff distance between the fertilizer and the seed so there's a slight barrier of soil um, so that barrier protects the seed from seed burn all while allowing uh, quick access to nutrients so that fertilizer is, that fertilizer is a lot closer to the seed than um, the mineral bander and then the packer tire can pack both the uh, fertilizer and seed furrow to adjust the depth it is per opener. So we're set on D, D for deadly, uh, instead of the Borgo where we had the shims that adjusted the whole frame. We have full blockage on every run, seed and fertilizer. So there's a lot of sensors. Um, so we don't have any plugged runs. Sometimes that happens. It is built a little bit lighter, there's not as much steel in the Seedhawks, although they have beefed up their frame a little bit in the past couple of years. Moving on to the tank, disregard my lawnmowers, so we have everything parked in here for winter. Um, there are four compartments, 60, 480, 300, and 160 bushels each. They're all individual. See the small gap between the tanks? They're all on load cells, so it's all measured and scaled, so you have the right rate and calibrations. So this is where it gets fun. Uh, the drill is 70 feet. There are seven manifolds at 10 feet each. So on the tank, each manifold, each section is metered individually. So this is actually type B metering, which means there is no primary manifold. It's all metered into the secondary manifolds already. So there's only one split in the line instead of two splits. So it's all metered into its secondary meters already. I'll explain this in a bit. It's all metered into there. And then the only split is at the towers, at the manifold. So it's only split once and then it goes into its individual hoses. Type B metering. So each manifold has its own electric motor. And this is the metering system. So you have an electric motor. Take this electric motor off and you find a roller. So there's different rollers. And this is the metering system that the Seahawk uses. So product drops out of the bottom of the tank. These spin and that is your rate controller as it falls into these secondary tubes. So it's kind of like seven mini drills built into one big drill. So if you have variable rate, prescription mapping, it's all individual manifolds, um, not the entire drill width. The conveyor is on the left side of the tank, opposite of what we're used to. Fans are back here. A lot more out of the dust straight line 
underneath the tank. Straight air system. Coming back to the toolbar, uh, full sectional control and turn compensation. So going back to the rollers, say, say we're turning left with the individual uh, manifolds. So the left wing, the rollers are gonna slow down and then the right wing, the rollers are going to speed up as that right wing is traveling faster than the left wing, more seed and fertilizer in the ground. So that's where that metering helps out. Also with the sectional control, once you have reached an already seeded area, the openers will actually lift out of the ground. They don't stay in the ground like the Borgo. So a little bit less seed disturbance. In our toolbox here, lots of rollers, all for different rates, different products. Um, yeah, so we're uh, full of rollers there. So like say you're putting on 150 pounds of urea, you're gonna use a different roller than if you're putting on four and a half pounds of canola. So gotta make sure you have the right roller for right, uh, the right product. Tank stairs, gonna be honest, just, just not as good, just not as good. Pull this down, they're at the front. It'll lock in. And then you have to put the stairs back up before you start seating again, or else uh, this tire can, can hit these stairs. I have heard. Take a look inside. I think guys just take this out, this basket, little, uh, screen thing we'll screen it at the bottom out of the bin and the, at the bottom of the conveyor anyway there's a little sight glass down there to see if you're empty and then there's also i'm just gonna take this out yeah there's a sight glass and then also in the bottom there's a little agitator that spins to kind of keep the product flowing, keep it even along the bottom, because you can't run these tanks right empty. You gotta leave a little bit in the bottom because all those individual meters need to have product in them. So if you run it, um, if you're pretty much empty, you know, you can have one meter that's still metering and then one that's empty. So then you're gonna have strips in your field so you got to leave a little bit more in the tank you can't have it right empty so i guess that is one kind of drawback with this type of metering system but we got a nice big platform lots of room up here railing big tank lids uh, lights are supposed to be pretty good so it's nice uh good area to work in this is a canola tank or whatever else you want to use it for. So we're going to miss the saddle tank on the Borgo because really the canola tank is on the side. And we just used the tractor to lift the mini bulks up and uh, dump it in that way. So now we're going to have to, well we don't really use bags, but if we did we'd have to uh, crawl them all up there. And uh, if we use a mini bulk, it's just gonna have to go through the conveyor. So we really did like that uh, saddle tank. Uh -oh. So there's two more receivers. One that looks just like this on the toolbar and then another one on the roof of the fent um, to help with the STCX, the sectional control and the turn compensation just so the drill, the drill has a more signal and knows where it is for seated and unseated parts of the field. So it's a very brief overview of the seed hawk. There's tons more stuff. I'm still learning, I'm no expert. I will be in the spring, hopefully. Um, there's lots more you could go into. Um, two takeaways from this, if you can't remember, individual manifold metering, 
and dual knife. Let's take a look at the Borgo. Built heavy, a lot of steel in there. Got the big high float kit up front, big casters. Got the mineral banders at the front. So that's for our fertilizer and then just a single shoot for the seed. So that's a different, a little different system. This is our depth control, quick depth adjust with these shims. Um, lifting the whole frame for the depth adjustment. Very convenient, maybe a little bit less accurate lifting the whole frame, but there's also these pins um, that we were pulling depending if um, the uh, shank found itself in the tank track or just a little bit of variance within the toolbar. So with the Seed Hawk, pins on every shank for the depth adjustment. That's our canola tank and inoculant. So yeah, we were just, uh, if you guys follow along, you know, we just lift up the uh, mini bulks and dump it right in there. So that's gonna be different. We're gonna miss that for sure. So with the Borgo metering, type A metering, there's a primary airstream, primary line, going to primary splitter, which is our sectional control which didn't work that bad. Um, no, no, it works well, it just, you know, doesn't look, you know, kind of looks how it is. There's gates in here that go up and down to shut off your manifolds. Primary splitter going to your secondary splitters, which are your manifolds at your uh, drill sections, and then to the individual seed and fertilizer hoses. So. With the seed hawk, it's already metered. It bypasses all this. It's already metered here. Metered at every individual drill manifold. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. It bypasses all this. So is it more accurate? Maybe, you know, maybe with a little bit more, you know, splits, it's not as accurate. So bypassing all this, more uniform throughout the drill, plus Seed Hawk's depth, you know, accuracy, it's supposed to be a, a pretty precise drill. Bigger rubber on the, on the Borgo, these are 850s, 800s on the Seed Hawk. See the fans are down low, a little bit dirtier area. there on this side and then the whole the whole tank is on a, a scale not, not individual compartments on load cell the whole thing except for this saddle tanks on its own scale and all these cables all these eventually ran into the cab a lot of stuff a lot of stuff ran into the cab so why switch you've ran Borgo forever you know how to run it. The crops are good. Why well, switch to the Seed Hawk? Well, you should see the crops these things grow. They're accurate. They're uniform. The crops seem like they're up early. And, uh, you know, if we can, if we think it's going to do a little bit better job, you know, a little bit better yield, a little bit nicer fields, we're going to switch just to, you know, Get a little bit better. Plus, I wanted to see what the hype is about. I heard a heard a saying once: If you're jealous of your neighbor's drill, get a Borgo. If you're jealous of your neighbor's crops, get a Seed Hawk. <laughs>